In the shadows of the Cold War's aerial dance, one weapon reigns supreme, the S-75 Vina, a silent sentinel of the Soviet skies. More than a missile system, it was a lethal mastro, orchestrating the downfall of U-2 spy planes and challenging the might of American bombers. In this enigmatic narrative, the S-75 emerges as the deadly waltz partner in a geopolitical tango, its thunderous echo is rewriting the rules of aerial warfare. Join the journey through the clouds as we unveil the secrets of the SAM system that cast a shadow over high-flying espionage and altered the course of Cold War history. In the clandestine dance of the Cold War, where shadows whispered and tensions loomed like storm clouds, the S-75 Vina emerged as the Soviet Union's answer to the soaring threat of high-altitude espionage. Born in the crucible of the Soviet military-industrial complex during the late 1950s, the SA-2 guideline, as NATO would dub it, was more than a mere missile system. It was a sentinel, a guardian crafted in the urgency of an escalating Cold War, where the skies became a battleground for secrets and supremacy. As the Iron Curtain descended, the Soviet Union recognized the pressing need for a defense mechanism capable of reaching the stratosphere an aerial vanguard against potential incursions into their guarded airspace. The S-75, with its lethal cocktail of rocket propulsion and sophisticated guidance, became the silent custodian of Soviet skies, ready to unveil its deadly gants whenever the need arose. In the high-stakes game of one-upmanship, the S-75 stood as a technological titan, a testament to the Soviet resolve not to be outdone in the race for aerial dominance. Thus, the Cold War's silent symphony played on, with the S-75 orchestrating a deadly ballet in the celestial theater of geopolitical intrigue. In the enigmatic world of military engineering, the S-75 Dvena stood as a symphony of innovation, its effectiveness etched into the very fabric of its design. At its pulsating core was a marriage of technological marvels, a powerful rocket motor, a celestial navigation dance, and an explosive and core that resonated with destruction. This mobile SAM system was no mere guardian of the skies, it was a virtuoso, conducting a lethal performance against aerial intruders. Its ingenious fusion of a robust rocket motor propelled it into the stratosphere, rendering once inaccessible altitudes now within its grasp. The Guidance System, a celestial choreographer of death, tracked targets with a precision that defied the limits of imagination. What set the S-75 apart was not just its capacity to engage targets, but its audacity to challenge the previously invincible. The stratosphere, once a sanctuary for reconnaissance flights, became a contestant realm. With a prowess that defied expectation, the S-75 emerged as the formidable maestro of the high-altitude ballet, where speed and altitude were its notes, and destruction its crescendo. In this dance of innovation and annihilation, the S-75's capability to operate at unprecedented heights made it an indomitable force forever altering the narrative of aerial warfare. In the cloak and dagger realm of Cold War espionage, the S-75 Vina etched its name in history with a thunderous exclamation mark on May 1, 1960, the day of the infamous U-2 incident, as the United States sought to unravel the enigma of Soviet military capabilities. High-flying U-2 spy planes became the daring emissaries of American curiosity, skimming the edge of the atmosphere to gather clandestine intelligence. However, fate took a treacherous turn as a Soviet S-75 missile, commanded by a crew of expert operators, soared skyward. In a chilling ballet of technology and strategy, the missile found its mark, bringing down the U-2 piloted by Gary Powers in a spectacular display of Soviet prowess. The incident was more than a clash of steel and wings, it was a seismic rupture in Cold War dynamics. The shattered U-2 and its captured pilot became symbols of a perilous cat and mouse game played in the skies. The S-75's deadly accuracy not only unveiled the potency of Soviet air defenses, but also sent shockwaves through diplomatic corridors, ratcheting up the already tense Cold War atmosphere. The U-2 incident wasn't just a single event, it was the crescendo in a symphony of geopolitical tensions, forever marking the S-75 as the silent sentinel that could shatter the illusions of invincibility. In the tense theater of the Cuban Missile Crisis, the S-75 Dvina stepped into the spotlight once more in 1962, casting a shadow of uncertainty over the world. As the Cold War's intensity reached a fever pitch, the Soviet Union played its strategic trump card, deploying the S-75 batteries to the palm-fringed shores of Cuba. 
the island, already a focal point of geopolitical contention, became a high-stakes chessboard, and the S-75 stood as the queen, poised to defend against potential U.S. airstrikes. The world held its breath as the S-75, a silent guardian in the tropical shadows, took center stage in a high-stakes aerial ballet. It challenged the presumed supremacy of the U.S. Air Force. The very presence of these formidable SAM systems altered the strategic calculus of both superpowers, transforming the Caribbean skies into a tense battleground where the slightest misstep could plunge the world into nuclear catastrophe. The S-75's deployment in Cuba wasn't just a military maneuver. It was a bold statement, a punctuation mark in the narrative of Cold War brinkmanship. As the standoff unfolded, the S-75 became the unsung arbiter of peace, a technological titan influencing the delicate balance that teetered on the precipice of global conflict. The success of the S-75 Dvina in the stratospheric showdowns of the Cold War sent shockwaves through the corridors of Pentagon power. It wasn't just a missile system, it was a gauntlet thrown, demanding a revaluation of U.S. aerial strategies. The skies, once assumed to be an open canvas for American reconnaissance, became a battleground where the S-75's efficiency played a symphony of vulnerability for U.S. high-altitude assets. In response to this unexpected challenge, the United States engaged in a strategic recalibration. American aircraft designers, spurred by the urgency of countering the S-75 threat, embarked on a technological odyssey. The sleek contours of reconnaissance planes transformed, shedding vulnerability and adopting an agile armor against the silent thunder of Soviet SAMs. Tactics, once predictable, now pirouetted in the air, weaving a complex choreography to outsmart the vigilant eyes and deadly reach of the S-75. Yet, the dance persisted, a cat and mouse ballet in the skies. The S-75's success spurred not just innovation in the U.S., but a relentless pursuit of advantage on both sides. The arms race, ever evolving, saw each move countered, each counter countered again. In this perpetual contest, the S-75 wasn't just a weapon. It was a catalyst for an era where the strategic tango between offense and defense shaped the destiny of nations. The U-2 incident of 1960, with Gary Powers at its reluctant epicenter, was a seismic shockwave in the delicate tapestry of Cold War politics. Powers, piloting a high-flying U-2 spy plane, found himself entangled in the lethal embrace of a Soviet S-75 missile. Miraculously surviving the fiery plummet, Powers was captured by Soviet forces, becoming an unwitting pawn in the geopolitical chess match. His capture rippled through international relations, casting a shadow on the already frosty diplomacy between the superpowers. Powers, stripped of his aerial fortress, became a human emblem of the Cold War's high-stakes gamuts. His fate, a precarious thread in the intricate tapestry of Cold War politics, was woven into the fabric of espionage lore. The U-2 incident was more than a momentary clash in the skies. It marked a turning point in intelligence-gathering strategies. The vulnerability of traditional reconnaissance platforms was laid bare, prompting a revaluation of tactics. The need for more advanced, elusive platforms became glaringly apparent, leading to the evolution of stealth technology and cutting-edge aerial espionage techniques. In this crucible of conflict, Gary Powers unwittingly became a catalyst for a new era of covert reconnaissance, where the skies were no longer an open book, but a labyrinth of secrets guarded by the ghosts of Cold War intrigue.